Hi, I welcome you all to this knowledge gaining session on the cantilever. And taking you along on this journey is Dr. Yunus Jerusha, an assistant professor of physics. Cantilevers are seen anywhere and everywhere and sometimes even inside our bodies. This is a cantilever bridge, a cantilever retaining wall, cantilever scaffolding, a cantilever slab and also for dental implants. A cantilever is a beam fixed horizontally at one end and loaded at the other end. Let us consider a beam fixed at one end and loaded at its other free end as shown in the diagram. Due to the load applied at the free end, a couple is created between the two forces. The first force being the tensile force due to the load applied acting in the downward direction and there is a reactive force acting in the upward direction at the fixed supporting end. This external bending couple tends to bend the beam in the clockwise direction but since one end of the beam is fixed the beam cannot rotate. Therefore this external bending couple must be balanced by another equal and opposite couple created due to the elastic nature of the body called as the internal bending moment. Under equilibrium conditions, the external bending moment must be equal to the internal bending moment. Let us now proceed to determine the depression which the cantilever beam undergoes when it is loaded at its free end. We have a cantilever beam NL of length L where it is loaded at the free end by a load W. Due to the load applied at this free end, the cantilever's free end L moves to a new position L prime. Let us consider an element along the length of the cantilever beam PQ having a length dx. PQ is in the form of an arc and this arc is subtended at the center of curvature O by an angle d theta. The corresponding radius of curvature is given by R. Due to the load applied at the free end of the cantilever, an external couple is created between the load W at L prime and the force of reaction at Q. Here, the arm of the couple, which is the distance between the two equal and opposite forces, is L minus X. From the figure shown here, we can find out the expression for the external bending moment. Bending moment, as we all know, is a product of the force into the perpendicular distance. And for our case, the external bending moment is a product of the tensile force given by the load into the perpendicular distance L minus X. Therefore, the external bending moment is given by W into L minus X which is represented by equation 1. The internal bending moment on the other hand is given by YIG by R which you would have learned in your earlier lecture class with Y the Young's modulus of the cantilever, R the radius of curvature of the neutral axis in the cantilever beam and IG being the geometric moment of inertia of its cross section. At equilibrium, the external bending moment 
is equal to the internal bending moment. Therefore, we equate equation 1 which is W into L minus X with equation 2 which is YIG by R. This relationship is represented by equation 3. From the same figure, it is observed that the moment of the couple increases towards the fixed end N and the radius of curvature is different at different points along the length of the beam and it decreases as it proceeds towards the free end L. Consider the section PQ at a distance DX from P. That is PQ which is the arc length is equal to DX. Have a close look at this picture especially at point P as well as point Q. The radius of curvature at point P as well as at point Q will be the same and it's going to be equal to R since P and Q are very close to each other and are separated by a very very small distance dx. Therefore, OP is equal to OQ which is equal to capital R the radius of curvature with O being the center of curvature of the arc PQ. The angle which is subtended by PQ is d theta and it's subtended at the center of curvature O. Then PQ which is the arc length, PQ is the arc length which is equal to dx is equal to the product of the radius of curvature R into the angle subtended by the arc. Cross multiplying we find R to be equal to dx by d theta. Substituting this expression of R in equation 3 which was present in our earlier slide we get W into L minus X to be equal to d theta by dx into yig. We rearrange these terms to get d theta and we find that d theta is equal to W into L minus X divided by yig into dx which we uh, represent by equation 4. From the diagram, it is observed that the tangent drawn from point P meets the line LL prime at point C. Similarly, the tangent drawn from point Q meets the line LL prime at point D. The angle between these two tangents is d theta and the depression of point Q below point P is given by dy. dy is the elementary depression. dy is obtained from CD and CD acts as the arc length. In order to find the arc length, we know the formula arc length is equal to radial length into the angle subtended. Therefore, arc length is given by dy. The radial length is given by L minus x and the angle subtended is given by d theta. Substituting these, we obtain the elementary depression dy to be dy is equal to L minus x into d theta. Rearranging, we have d theta to be equal to dy divided by L minus x. This is represented by equation 5. Substituting equation 4 from the previous slide in equation 5 and rearranging, we obtain the elementary depression dy 
to be equal to W into L minus X the whole square divided by YIG into DX which is represented as equation 6. Integrating this equation 6 we obtain the total depression which the cantilever beam NL undergoes to be denoted by Y. The total depression which the cantilever beam undergoes on the application of a load W can be obtained by integrating equation 6. The integration of equation 6 on the left hand side gives us small y. Integrating the right hand side we have integral 0 to L WL minus x the whole square by yig dx. W by yig being a constant we take it out and therefore inside the integral we have L minus x the whole square and here we have the expanded form of L minus x the whole square which is L square minus 2LX plus x squared dx. The next step we take dx on the inside and we proceed with the integration and we obtain the depression small y to be equal to W by yig L square dx on integration gives us L square x. 2LX dx on integration gives us 2L x square by 2 and x square dx on integration gives us x cube by 3. We now proceed to substitute the lower limit and the upper limit. First we substitute the upper limit which is L. On substitution we have L square L minus 2 L L square by 2 plus L cube by 3. Substitution of the lower limit 0 gives us 0 as the value for all the 3 terms. So we don't bother about it. We go ahead simplify this equation. We have plus L cube as the first term. The second term gives us minus L cube and the third term gives us L cube by 3. Therefore, cancellation of the first and the second terms gives us just plainly L cube by 3 and on consolidating all these terms we have small y the depression to be WL cube by 3Y IG where we know that W stands for the load which has been applied at the free end, small l stands for the length of the cantilever beam, capital Y stands for the Young's modulus of the material of the cantilever beam and IG stands for the geometrical moment of inertia of the beam. Therefore, equation 7 is the expression for the depression or deflection produced by the cantilever beam at the free end when it is loaded. Using equation 7, we obtain the Young's modulus of the material of the cantilever beam. This is obtained by interchanging small y with capital Y. Therefore, equation 7 on rewriting in terms of Young's modulus is given as capital Y is equal to WL cube divided by 3Y IG. This is represented as equation 8. We now proceed to substitute the load W in terms of the mass M. Therefore, W is equal to Mg and on substitution of this value of W in equation 8, we have another expression for the Young's modulus capital Y to be MgL cube divided by 3Y IG which we represent as equation 9. Mathematically and theoretically, we have obtained a relationship to find out the Young's modulus of the material of the beam. We now proceed to experimentally verify if this indeed is the Young's modulus of the material of the beam. The experimental setup is as shown. One end of the beam is fixed while at the other end 
we place a load by means of a groove the load is in the form of a weight hanger and a pin is attached at the other end the pin is present in order to note down the position of the cantilever beam for increasing and decreasing loads and in order to measure the various positions of the pin for varied loads a microscopic arrangement is present in front of the cantilever beam the various microscope readings which are obtained for various loads of the beam are written in the corresponding tabular column when the loads are increased in steps of 50 grams the corresponding readings are noted in this column and when the readings are decreased in steps of 50 grams the readings are noted in this column the mean of these two columns is written here and the corresponding depression is noted in this column the various m by y values are calculated and correspondingly written in this column and the mean m by y value is found substituting the mean value of m by y which was calculated from the last column in the table just seen the young's modulus of the given cantilever beam can be calculated this young's modulus can be calculated for two types of beams the circular as well as the rectangular beams now for the circular beam the geometric moment of inertia is given by pi r power 4 by 4 this on substitution in the formula for young's modulus gives us y to be equal to 4 mg l cube by 3 y pi r pa 4 similarly for the case of a rectangular cantilever the geometric moment of inertia is given by bd cube by 12 on substitution in the formula for the young's modulus we obtain y to be equal to 4 mg l cube by y bd cube to graphically verify the young's modulus of the material of the cantilever beam the load with its corresponding depression values are tabulated in this tabular column from which a graph is drawn the graph has the load values plotted along the x axis and the depression values are plotted along the y axis a positively sloped line is obtained the slope of this line is given by bc by ac and in terms of the depression and load the slope is delta y by delta m we substitute this value of the slope in the formula for young's modulus and therefore the young's modulus in terms of the slope obtained is given by 4 g l cube by b d cube into the reciprocal of the slope the value thus obtained is a graphically obtained young's modulus value for the material of the cantilever beam let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of the cantilever beam first the advantages it is simple in construction has one fixed support it creates a negative bending moment and can counteract it with a positive bending moment anywhere else in the beam thermal expansion and ground movement are easy to sustain and last of all it is very rigid due to its depth now for some disadvantages it undergoes large deflections and therefore large bending moments it needs another fixed support or a back span to check for the uplift of fast support 
and heavy loads create large moments at the fixed end and it can break free from the support leading to a disaster. This session would have helped you to determine mathematically, experimentally and graphically the Young's modulus of the material of a cantilever beam. Also, it would have created an awareness of the advantages and disadvantages of a cantilever. Thank you for your patient listening.